Battlefield is a series that from the start has been pushing the capabilities of first-person shooters, especially in the multiplayer department. With Battlefield 1's final chapter of DLC coming soon, aka Battlefield 1 Apocalypse, we thought we'd look back at the game that started it all and compare it to the latest entry in the series. Hi, I'm Alva Lance with the leaderboard and today we'll be seeing just how much has changed in then versus now Battlefield. <laughs> The Developers Battlefield 1942 was made by a relatively small team of 14 developers at Digital Illusions CE and was released in 2002. Up until this point, the company had mostly produced racing games and digital pinball games. Battlefield 1942 was built in the Refractor engine, with the original version of the engine being used in the lesser-known game Codename Eagle. The engine was acquired by Digital Illusions CE in the purchase of Refraction Games, who had been working on what would become Battlefield 1942 at the time of their purchase. Once bought, the team that had been working on the game at Refraction finished their work at Digital Illusion CE. It was a personal computer exclusive, so Windows and Mac only, which, while somewhat common back then, is pretty rare for a bigger budget game nowadays. The developers wanted to make an Xbox version of the game, but the port project was dropped when they needed more people to work on expansion packs. Battlefield 1 is being made by the same developers, albeit with a different name. After releasing the first Battlefield, Digital Illusion CE became a lot more popular than they were before. They eventually shortened their name to DICE, and a couple years later were acquired by Electronic Arts to become EA DICE. At this point, they kind of became the Battlefield company, with almost all the releases being either a core entry in the series or a Battlefield expansion or spin-off. They managed to put out some other original games here or there, like for example the fantastic parkourthon known as Mirror's Edge. The Classes The first Battlefield, uh, that is to say Battlefield 1942, was a pretty unique concept for the time. A multiplayer shooter that not only only had team-based objectives, but also unique classes with their own strengths and weaknesses on the field that forced players to have a lot more cooperation and teamwork, more so than other deathmatch-style multiplayer modes that other shooters were using at the time. Battlefield 1942 had five classes to choose from, Scout, Assault, Anti-Tank, Medic, and Engineer. The Scout, well, scouted ahead and used his binoculars to gain intel on the enemy, while also using bolt-action weapons to fend off attackers when necessary. Assault is the I just want to run around and shoot bad guys class. Anti-tank is the rocket launcher specialist, and medic is, well, pretty self-explanatory, you know, the medic who heals people. Lastly, the engineers repair the team's vehicles and tanks, and also have the ability to plant TNT to blow up the other team's stuff. Battlefield 1, however, has more than double the classes, clocking in at 11 total. Although, to be fair, three of those classes are just vehicles, and four of them are essentially power-ups. But still, the scout, assault, and medic classes are still around, and still essentially fill their respect roles, even if their weapons have changed slightly with the time period going backwards. The Engineer class has evolved into the Support class, which still repairs vehicles but can now replenish their team's ammo as well. Three of the new classes are the vehicles spun out into their own full-fledged class option at the spawn screen instead of being something that is out in the field that you can get into like in the original. The player can spawn as a tanker, an airplane, or horseback cavalry depending on the level. The rest of the classes are the elite classes, which are pickups that the game will randomly spawn in the middle of the match, and anyone can use them. From these pickups, you can become a flame trooper, a sentry, a tank hunter, or a trench raider, included with the DLC. The flame trooper makes you resistant to fire and chemicals and plops a flamethrower in your hands. The sentry is a tank, not literally, but the figurative kind like in the role-playing games. They soak up damage and walk around very slowly with a really big gun. The tank hunter does exactly what it says, hunts tanks. They have plenty of guns and a pocket full of grenades to help them take out those giant metallic enemies. The trench raider is the juiced up version of the assault class with faster movement speed and more powerful weapons. The setting. Battlefield 1942 takes place during World War II and recreates all the sites of the more significant battles while trying to maintain a level of historical accuracy. Players choose to play as either Axis or Allies, and depending on the map chosen, will be playing as different nations based on which ones were historically in that battle. So for example, playing on the El Alamein map has you battling in the role of either Germany or the United Kingdom, and the Stalingrad map has you in the role of the Soviet Union taking on Germany. In a name that is confusing to your grandmother for sure when she goes Christmas shopping, Battlefield 1 really is the latest entry in the series. Its peculiar name comes from them taking the setting even 
even farther back in time to World War I. So you'll be seeing the deserts of Arabia, the Italian Alps, and realistically crumbling cities. This is the first game in the series since 1942, not including spin-offs, that takes place in a historical time frame and isn't a modern day or not so distant future setting, which has brought DICE lots of acclaim from critics and fans alike. Multiplayer modes. In Battlefield 1942, you are given a choice between a couple of multiplayer modes, with the default being Conquest. That mode consists of the two teams starting with a predetermined number of tickets between 150 and 300. Aside from having the general goal of killing the opposing team's members, which depletes the other team's tickets, the two teams are also trying to take over and maintain control of different capture points around the map. As the round goes on, both teams are gradually losing tickets no matter what, but the rate of tickets lost is slowed as your team holds more capture points in their grip. There are also your standard first-person shooter modes like Deathmatch and Capture the Flag, as well as a co-op mode, which filled in the remaining team slots with AIs, allowing you and a buddy to play. Battlefield 1 retains the Conquest mode, which by now is a staple of the series, but also introduces some new ones. One of the new modes is Operations, which spans across multiple maps and multiple skirmishes to simulate an entire war campaign. The attacking side essentially has three lives represented by battalions. If the defenders can successfully defend for a round, the attackers lose a life slash battalion. If all three battalions slash lives are defeated, the defending team wins. But if the attackers are successful, the mode then progresses onto the next map in the campaign. And once all maps are attacked and taken over, the attackers win. There's also a new War Pigeons mode that already had me on board the moment they said pigeon. It's kind of a twist on Capture the Flag, but the flag is, you guessed it, a pigeon. The teams are fighting to capture a carrier pigeon, and once captured, they have to defend the pigeon while putting a note on it. After releasing the pigeon, the other team can attempt to shoot it out of the sky before delivering the message. The first team to get three messages sent via bird wins the match. Weapons and Vehicles Both games are historically based, but since they're separated by a decent gap of time, both cover different eras of weapons and vehicles. Battlefield 1942 has some of your standard weapons like knives and handguns, but there's also hand grenades and automatic rifles. Also plantable explosives that you can use to blow up an enemy vehicle. If you like explosives, there's also a bazooka, which was actually a pretty new weapon at that time in real life. The weapons and vehicles are also different based on which team you're on. So if you're fighting as American or British forces, then you'll be driving an M10 Wolverine tank, while the German side will be equipped with a Panzer tank. Battlefield 1, taking place during World War 1, sometimes has a slower and more methodical feel to match the slower and more deliberate use of weapons at the time. There's some submachine guns and turrets, but a lot of weapons back then were either single or double bolt action, so you have to make your shots count. A new addition for this game is horseback combat with the cavalry. If you choose the cavalry class at spawn, then you'll be equipped with either a sword or a lance in hand and a horse beneath you. With this also being the era of the Red Baron, biplane combat was added to the mix for this entry as well. The modding community. One of the longest lasting and in its heyday, one of the largest modding communities around was for Battlefield 1942. Since the game lacked any substantial single player at launch, the PC community took it upon themselves to make campaigns and shared them around. There was also the standard graphics improvement mods for the crazy high-end computers, as well as custom maps and weapons. Some would add entire new modes that varied from slight tweaks on existing modes, all the way to entire new gameplay mechanics like soccer or medieval era based combat. Battlefield 1, being a modern game that's got 15 years of advancement in technology and programming since the original, is a little bit more complex. Being that way, EA has said that they won't be able to support any official mod tools like there's been for previous Battlefield installments. They've stated that the engine for this new Battlefield is too complicated for them to make and then bug test any kind of official tools to modify the game. However, that doesn't mean that there won't be any mods, just that it's much more difficult nowadays for any future game developers out there to cut their teeth on mod making. Single player. Multiplayer is kind of the main thing you come to the Battlefield series for, but as the series has gone on, they've taken more and more effort to make single player as much of a draw as the multiplayer. However, with the first entry in the series, Battlefield 1942 barely has a single player mode to speak of. It's essentially the multiplayer modes with AI controlled bots filling in the rest of the empty slots. There's no cutscenes or voiceovers to frame the single player, it's just jumping into a map and seeing how you do. And ironically, the single player would run worse than multiplayer, since the computer would have to run so many simultaneous AIs at once. With Battlefield 1, DICE really shows how far they've come in the single player department. Not only is the single player now a handcrafted and curated experience, but it's a well-written and gripping story in its own right. DICE knew that they wouldn't be able to tell a story that covered all the major moments in World War 1 with just a single protagonist, so the game actually follows a series of vignettes with their own personal stories that take place during the war, which is way better than 
having a single character somehow force gump their way into each major moment of the war, leaving a edge of your seat gripping experience of wondering if your character is even going to make it out alive. So there you have it. A lot can happen to a series in 15 years. I'm Alpha Lance with the leaderboard, and thanks for watching Battlefield Then versus Now. Which battlefield do you prefer? Any additions you'd like to see in the game? Tell us in the comments below. Be sure to hit that bell icon to become a member of the notification squad. And if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.